I'd like to introduce you to Alilo Chemicals. Timothy Johns, a nutritional anthropologist, links human diet and medicine. He proposed that in finding foods, people found medicines. Now, as we'll see, Daniel Mormon looked at the prevalence of food and medicine in a flora and proposed that these are separate knowledge domains. In general, what produces a bitter taste in plants? These are allelochemicals, which are plant defensive chemicals. These are secondary compounds produced by the plant to deter herbivores or other nearby plants. We humans use many allelochemicals as pesticides. One class of allelochemicals are the alkaloids. These are very diverse and widely distributed. Examples of these are listed here, the alkaloid on the left, the plant source in the center, and the pharmacological property on the right. Examples include quinine, which is an anti-malaria medicine, caffeine, which is a stimulant, capsicum, and piperine, which is black pepper. Most of the higher plants produce alkaloids, and over 21,000 alkaloids have been identified. Of course, as I mentioned, the plants use alkaloids as defense chemical agents against herbivores and pathogens. An alkaloid never occurs alone. Alkaloids are usually present as a mixture of a few major or several minor alkaloids. The dietary intake of small doses of alkaloids have therapeutic effect as muscle relaxants, tranquilizers, painkillers, and antimicrobials in human beings. But intake of large doses may be fatal. Another type of allelochemical are the phenolics or phenol. Phenol is naturally present in most foods. High phenol foods include tomatoes, apples, peanuts, bananas, oranges, cocoa, red grapes, and colored fruits, as well as milk. One example is naringen, the kind of bitter outer um, part to the grapefruit. Phenolics have been used as an antiseptic, disinfectant, and slimicide. For example, Salicylic acid is a natural phenolic compound found in willow bark, and this is the source of our present day aspirin. Tannins are highly astringent and unpalatable. Examples of plants that contain high tannins include acorns and some sorghums. So you need to rinse out the tannins before these plant foods can be edible. Otherwise, they could damage your kidneys. Historically, many of the Indian tribes in California depended upon acorn for a lot of their calories. And they would pound up the um, nut meats and leach them by uh, digging a little bowl in the sand, lining it with um, grass, putting in the acorn mush, and pouring water over and over it until the tannins had leached out. Uh, one woman said at some point, it, it just doesn't, the food just isn't as good today. She really wanted that. So she, she was used to the astringent taste that still remained. Another type of allelochemical are the cyanogenic glycosides. These are also widespread in plants. Examples include the amygdalin and apple, apricot and bitter almond, in other words, members of the rose family, as well as lima bean and sorghum. Terpenoid compounds are also found in a number of plants. These include pines, peppercorns, cedar, rosemary, lemon, mints, lavender, junipers, orange peel, lemongrass, hops, roses and wine grapes, myrtles, and cannabis. I myself have accidentally eaten some cucurbitacins from a wild gourd, and it was the most bitter thing I have ever tasted or imagined. 
Oxalates or oxalic acid cause oral irritation. I've also ingested this by accident. I, I was at a conference and they were serving um, tropical fruit and I was so excited to have my first tropical fruits. And when I saw this on the table, I grabbed some and popped it in my mouth. And what I learned was that you have to take off that green outer coating because it's full of oxalates. And when they say oral irritation, what it feels like is that you've got a giant crystal lodged in the roof of your mouth. And the effect lasted for, I don't, I don't remember, something like 15 or 20 minutes. Glycoalkaloids or steroidal alkaloids. These are astringent or bitter or give a burning taste. These are famously found in the tomato family, such as in potato peels. And another compound that's not necessarily an allelochemical are the saponins found in, for example, quinoa, yams, and potatoes. Generally, saponins have a bitter taste and characteristically, they foam. So when you buy quinoa, you need to rinse it. And if you've ever bought quinoa, like you see in this box here and rinsed it, you're likely to see foam. You could note how this box says it's washed and rinsed in an effort to remove the saponins. Saponins have widespread use as fish poisons, arrow poisons, soap, medicine, and it can hemolyze red blood cells. But when taken orally, it's harmless, although bitter. So in what ways can food be unpalatable? Well, the effects occur both in the nasal cavity, such as in the trigeminal nerve and the olfactory receptors, as well as in oral membranes. So you have, uh, you know, more than one way in which you're taking in uh, the fact that something tastes bad. And we consider bitter or astringency or sourness and even lack of positive stimuli to be unpalatable. So how do humans reduce toxins, that is, allelochemicals? Well, one way is to smell and taste the food and choose to eat only desirable foods. We also have some ability in our body for detoxication. That's the body's ability to reduce toxins. So we can handle toxins through enzymes, elimination through our bile and urinary tract, and with bacterial flora in the intestine, up to a point. When detoxication capacity is exceeded, you can vomit or you can process the plant food to detoxify it, or you could rely on domesticated plants. And that's one of the hallmarks of domesticated plants or differences between domesticated plants and weeds. Weeds need to have these toxins to keep away insects in domesticated plants, we've usually reduced these toxins, thereby also reducing their flavor, uh, and we keep away the insects. So how can one detoxify plant food before ingesting it? Well, you could cook it, you could grind it, you could leach it, or you could even add physical adsorbents such as clay. So there's one reason that some people eat clay. It can take poisons out of the food. Sometimes humans seek out compounds that taste bitter, pungent, astringent, sour, and so on. Generally, we like sweet and we dislike bitter. The level at which we can detect either can vary due to the genetic basis of our human group. We can also learn responses, so you can acquire a taste for unpalatable substances, such as bitter acorns, or caffeine, or capsaicin, that is, hot peppers. So why maintain certain preferences at a population level? I mean, granted, these can distinguish one cultural group from another. Well, most humans consume some flavorful allelochemicals regularly as condiments such as horseradish, mustard, and pepper, and as part of their diet. 
such as the glycoalkaloids in potatoes or the tannins in acorns. Or sometimes only out of necessity when other foods are not available and you turn to famine foods that have these allelochemicals in them. Or to provide variety in your diet. Or because the strongly flavored plants are the only ones you can grow in your garden because they are resistant to pests. Why maintain certain preferences at a population level? For medicine or to contribute to your cultural identity or for social cultural factors. Although here in America, we tend to separate foods from medicines, many people around the world understand that foods contain medicines.